G'day legends, you guys are about to watch part two of my fishing hacks. Now before I start, I thought I'd give you all a quick thank you for all your continued support. Any newcomers, make sure you hit that subscribe button, plenty more to come. And as always guys, if you like or learn something, make sure you give it the big thumbs up. Cheers legends, enjoy, catch you next time. Now I've got a hack for all you fishos out there and it's to ward off that damn rust. Now, I'm sure we've all bought pairs of shoes, clothes, food packets, all that sort of stuff that have these guys in it. Now they're silica crystals and they actually absorb all the moisture from the nearby environment, which means they're perfect for putting in your tackle boxes after a trip and you're gonna put them back in storage. So grab a couple, put them in your trays and any moisture that's left in in that tackle box is gonna get absorbed by those crystals. Now obviously we still recommend you rinse your lures to get the salt off and dry them out properly, but anything you miss, those silica crystals are gonna take care of. Now obviously, keep an eye on your kids around these guys, you can't eat them, so make sure they're well out of sight when you're storing them. But, it's a handy little tip for you guys to hopefully save you guys a few lures. So, have a good one, and I'll catch you next time. Now how often you bought a pack of hooks, they're carbon steel, chemically sharpened, beautiful hook, but you go to gang them, or open up the eye, and this happens. I don't know if the camera will get that, but the eye breaks. Now, that is the result of the carbon steel being quite brittle, but there is a sneaky way around it. All you have to do is heat it up with a lighter. Now we're gonna heat it up. I've got a little jet lighter here, but because we're using fire and heat and all that sort of stuff, you do need to exercise some caution. You don't wanna burn your fingers. So we're gonna use pliers and all sorts of stuff. If you're a young one, make sure you get your parents to give you a hand. But we're gonna complete this gang here. We've got a two gang, we just need to put that third hook on. Now all we need to do, grab our pliers, hold the hook, and then use our lighter to just heat the eye. You only want to heat the eye section there because that's the section that's going to do the, the movement once we try and open it. So heat it up, probably give it about 10-15 seconds. And then we use our pliers with the special opening tool. Open it up. Like so. Okay, so you can see that hook eye is nice and open up now. Now all we do is get our gang, slip that swivel on there. We wanna change the position of the hook so it's sitting in one of these grooves. And while it's still warm, very important that you do it still warm, you wanna close that eye up. Like so. Now keep in mind that's gonna be still pretty hot, so wait till it cools down before you touch it. Now you can see there on close up cam, we've got a beautiful three gang hooks. So it's gonna be perfect for rigging up pillies and strip baits, anything of that nature. Well there you have it guys, there's a simple tip that's gonna hopefully catch you more fish. Righto, have a good one, I'll catch you next time. Now this one is perfect for getting the kids involved with. We're gonna be making a milk bottle bait bucket. And all you need is a two litre milk bottle, empty of course, and a pair of scissors. Now the end result is gonna look something like that. Now for kiddies, it's a perfect little bait bucket they can call their own. Uh, for the adults, if you do forget your bait bucket, this is a quick and easy fix for it. But it's great for the kids, they can get involved, get a little bit excited about their upcoming fishing trip and uh, have one to make themselves. Wash it out of course, otherwise it's gonna stink. Just grab your scissors, go down. I'll just go down to the label on both sides. Obviously, the younger ones, give them a hand with the scissoring because that can be a little bit dangerous. And then once we get down to the bottom, you want to cut across. Like so. Oh yeah, how easy is that? You've got a bait bucket, slide it onto a belt like I've got here. Your, your um, rod bucket and you've got your bait bucket and you're gonna keep your bait all in one spot and it's gonna be nice and easy. Now for the kids, what do I recommend? I remember doing this as a young fella with my old man. I made up a couple before on Fraser trip. I was super excited about it. But the kids, give them a bit of paint. They can paint it up how they want and write their name on it, all sorts of stuff. And it just gets them that little bit excited to head out there and go fishing. But very simple guys, quick and easy. And uh, it's good fun, good fun. Righto guys, that's enough out of me. Catch you later, have a good one. This one's for all the boaties out there and fishermen of course. Now, today what we're gonna to be doing is silencing our anchor chain. 
Now, not only does this stop spooking fish below the surface, stops that clink, clink, clink while the anchor's set, it also protects your boat as you're dragging it over the side and letting it free. So it's a great little trick, and all you need to do is grab yourself some of these. So yeah, it's an old bike tube. Now you can pick these up from the bike shops. Generally they don't charge you because they're, they're old, they've been replaced, they're throwing them out anyway. You just get your old bike tube, one that's gonna fit tightly around your chain, your anchor chain, and you're good to go. So I've already set one up. I've already started to get one ready. What I've done is I've cut the little, whatever that is, the doobie whacker out of the tube so that's not hanging off. So I've got a big cut in both ends. I've threaded some rope through and I've also put some talcum powder down there or some baby powder. I did have that, where was it? Here it is. Yeah, a bit of baby powder. Now I've, I've chosen for triple baby protection. I'm not sure if that makes a difference, but ensure you get the good stuff. Um, <laughs> now what we want to do, we want to feed some rope through so you can use that to then pull the chain. Now I've taken both the D shackles off my chain, I've just left with the chain. And what I'm going to do is now work it through this so the whole length of chain comes in and out of this spike tube. But it's going to be a bit fiddly, so bear with me. Let's, uh, let's have a crack at it, eh? Righto, so almost ready to go. Got my chain tied to one end of the rope. The other end, I'm going to tie to my uh, dining room table and use that as an anchoring point. And that way I'll be able to pull against something solid and slide that up the chain. Now the talcum powder we've put in there, that's going to hopefully avoid all the friction that's going to be associated with the chain should make it slide on a bit easier but it's a bit fiddly will take a little bit of time and a bit of finessing but we'll get to it and I'll, uh, I'll touch base with you once I've got it on there well that took a little bit of getting on but I got there in the end have a go at this go just short gonna have to cut up that other tube and add it on now have a go at the difference in sound that's with the tube on and without it's pretty loud that's a fairly significant increase in noise now for those guys with fiberglass boats, this is going to protect your gunnels when you're dragging it over the side. So no more scratches, no more buffing out. Um, one hot tip though, when you get home, make sure you flush the inside of the tube out with fresh water because it will hold a bit of salt and that can cause your chain to rust. There you have it guys, nice simple boating hack for you. So have a crack at it, get it done, and I might even see you out in the water. Catch you later. Now I know it looks like Friday afternoon arts and crafts here, but believe me, by the time we finish, you'll be going, ah, what did I think of that? Now, today we're looking at how we can safely transport our knives from home out where we're camping or on the boat or in the caravan, wherever. Now, knives like this one here, awesome knives to use, but it doesn't come with a scabbard. So how am I meant to put this in my kit and take it with me safely? Now, it can be as simple as one of these. Now, these are easy to make yourself, as I'm gonna show you, but it's a bit of pipe, a little end cap, Safely stored two knives inside. Now the best thing about this is, keeps your knife safe, it also keeps your family safe. So if you've got kids, out of sight, out of mind for them, they're not gonna know what's in it, they don't care, they're not gonna touch it. But let's get to it. So what we're gonna need, I've got a, uh, I've got a bicycle tube which I've cut up. I've got some high density foam, some pipe. Now I've also got end caps, so two end caps for each piece of pipe. And I've got a bit of glue. You could just as easily use super glue or whatever glue you've got on hand. Also got a permanent marker which we'll use for labeling at the end. Your first step is you want to measure your pipe to the length of your knife. So you want it to be just slightly longer than the length of your knife. Now, with your two end caps, what you want to do, you want to make an impression on your foam. So force it down and you'll see it leaves a ring like that. Now that ring, is where you cut around, you cut around the inside, so you've got a little circle of foam, like so. And you wanna do the exact same with your rubber, and then you wanna end up with the same size ring, like that. Now the reason we do that is to take good care of the tip of our knife. So what we're gonna do, with our bit of foam, we're gonna put that in first, and then you wanna put the rubber on top. Now, from there we want to get a bit of glue, and we want to glue one end only on. We only want to do one end, and then force it on. Bingo. Now, while that dries, I'll explain what this is for. So, because you don't want your knife flogging around the inside of this with just a bare exposed edge, you get a bit of cardboard, and you fold it around the edge like that. That's going to protect your blade, and that's gonna sit inside your bit of pipe. That'll slide the whole way up with your knife. Now, your other end cap, 
That doesn't, doesn't need to be glued on. Obviously, you won't be able to get it off if you do. It slides on and off, but you can force it on pretty tight. It doesn't come off that easily, so kids aren't gonna be able to get into it. Just make sure with your little marker pen there, mark top. There you go, guys, safe as houses. Those knives are gonna be safe in transport. You're not gonna lose your edge. You're not gonna damage your, your knife. And most of all, you're not gonna damage any of your kids or family members that are digging through your kit. So whip yourself up some of these. Get out there, enjoy yourself. Stay safe. Catch you later.